Uh, going back to the supply shock, um, we've just never seen in the history of Bitcoin so much of the coins being scooped up and um, bought and locked away by very strong holders of the coin. And then you wrote, my macro top target has now increased to 300K and previously it was 250K. Can you elaborate on what you meant there? It has protected every top in Bitcoin history. And so currently that top target is launching upwards. And at the um, start of this year, January, it was zoning into a um, area of um, 200 to $300,000 by December. December of this year is typical to what we would expect for the end of a bull market. Um, if we get there, not saying that will happen this time around, but if we do top out in December, um, that target now is lifted to above 300,000 because the trajectory of that um, upper band of that moving average. Bitcoin price prediction by Willy Wu for December of 2021. In this video, on-chain analyst Willy Wu gives us his updated Bitcoin price prediction for December of 2021 based off a Bitcoin top model that has predicted the top of every single one of Bitcoin's last bull runs. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where technical trader Peter Brandt explains why we are nowhere near a Bitcoin bubble and we go over some recent bullish on-chain data that suggests where the Bitcoin price is likely to go from here. Also, only a tiny percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy the video, consider subscribing it's free and you can always change your mind enjoy the video and willie in one of your recent newsletters you wrote quote bitcoin is undergoing the largest supply shock in its history the steepest price rise seen so far in 21 has been supported by strong fundamentals and then you wrote my macro top target has now increased to 300k and previously it was 250k can you elaborate on what you meant there uh, going back to the supply shock, um, we've just never seen in the history of Bitcoin so much of the coins being scooped up and um, bought and locked away by very strong holders of the coin. Um, and we can see this from tracking the flows of um, coins out of the exchanges where typically people um, you know, speculate or buy and sell their coins and they have a, a set inventory, some of which is um, allocated for speculation. And we've just seen an unprecedented amount of depletion of that inventory. Um, if you look back in the 2017 bull market, we, sh we saw like a five month depletion of inventory and that was enough to propel um, the bull market of 2017 right up to the 20,000 from um, what initially was about um, one to one and a half thousand dollars when the inventory depletion um, ended. And now we're kind of in this zone of 11 to 12 months of inventory depletion. We've not seen this before. And you can look on chain and look at the holders and you can see the wallets that the holders, you, the behavior of the wallets by the holders. And there's a category where we term it liquid. These guys are just accumulating, buying and accumulating without any history of selling. And these guys are just hoovering up the coins. So there's a real supply shock. There's there's less and less coins um, each week that goes by that's available to be bought. And so um, obviously there's a mismatch between demand and supply and that has launched the price vertical um, and for some technical traders that do trade uh, indicators on the, the the price fluctuations they're all screaming over overbought overbought overheated whilst if you look into the ledger and see the the demand and supply of the coins by um, fundamental investors you can see that it's fully supported and so i run a um a very simple model, it's called mean, it's a mean reversion model, which is in simple terms is a, a moving average on the market cap, all time moving average. And you can um, use that to predict DOPS. It has predicted every top in Bitcoin history. And so currently that top target is launching upwards. And at the um, start of this year, January, it was zoning into a um, area of um, 200 to $300,000 by December. And December of this year is typical to what we would expect for the end of a bull market. Um, if we get there, not saying that will happen this time around, but if we do top out in December, 
um, that target now is lifted to above 300,000 because the trajectory of that um, upper band of that moving average. Uh, it's very unusual because um, normally what you expect is um, as more um, retail comes in, uh, more mums and pops, ordinary people off the streets, they tend to buy their coins and hold them on their exchange wallet because it's just a very easy experience. Um, so we've had this general trend of more and more coins being stored on um, exchanges like the Coinbase's of this world. is a very easy to use experience, um, but in this particular cycle, we're seeing huge amounts of coins move off exchanges and being locked away under their own custody. Um, and that's a signature of um, institutional players coming in and high net worth individuals. Um, they tend to store their coins under custody and in um, cold storage. So um, those clues and just the sheer uh, size of the purchases uh, you can see the size of the withdrawals coming out from the exchanges. Um, they just really point to institutions scooping up coins. So it's it's very, very unlikely it's anything else but the institutions. And by that, you mean like Tesla, MicroStrategy, the, the corporate treasurers that are buying Bitcoin or are there any other institutions you would include in that bucket? Yeah, institutions is a, a, is kind of <laughs> is kind of a, a menagerie, really, because in, in simple terms, it's just um, coins held by a custodian for a whole lot of people, whether that's um, you know Tesla and their shareholders or f fund managers. So um, it's it's looking like we've got hedge funds coming in. Um, we've got the the corporate treasury um, by you know, led by Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy, and now, you know, the latest is being Tesla. Uh, but, you know, we've we've also seen announcements that it's pension funds as well. Um, Grayscale said they had a lot of strong buying from there. I've just seen that New Zealand has announced that their one of their um, funds for pensions has, has bought into Bitcoin in October. So, yeah, across the gamut, there's all sorts of institutions buying right now. It, it seems like the word is out that Bitcoin is now a valid investment alternative to gold in these times. What I have noticed looking at the exchanges in terms of the bid offer spread, what happens on the bid, what happens on the offer side is oftentimes when a market blows off and we hear some people say this is a big bubble, we're blowing off, Bitcoin's a bubble. There are characteristics of a bubble. Uh, well, one of them is that markets go up fast with bids. There's aggressive bids that take place in the late stages of a bull market that kind of blow it off. And all those bids come in and chase the market's FOMO. What we know is retail FOMO takes place within the whole market. This market is very different. What I've noticed is, is the market's not necessarily going up on aggressive bids. What's happening is an offer comes in and just immediately gets taken. And so this nature of the bull market is such that what I see is whenever something is offered, it's just taken immediately by somebody who's willing to take the offer. So rather than going up on bids, it's going up on, ex on higher uh, offer prices, higher and higher offer prices. That may sound like it's, there's really no difference to people who I'm familiar with how markets uh, behave. But for me, uh, as, a, as a technical trader, that's really significant because it shows me that there are big names, there are big, deep top pockets that are saying, we're not gonna chase the market, but whenever something gets offered, we're willing to take it. And that kind of resonates very well with what Willie described. Yeah, so you're saying yeah. that whenever there's a, um, a big offer on hand, large enough for a very large purchase to come in, they'll take it because there's not a lot of um, offers that size that's on the table and they're just waiting for whenever there's an offer, they'll take it. Yeah, that, that's interesting. So there's Willy Wu and his prediction model expecting an over $300,000 Bitcoin by December this year. If you are a Bitcoin holder, let's hope he's correct. Now, for two charts directly out from Willy Wu that I wanted to cover again on the channel. First up, in case you missed it yesterday, an interesting charting idea that shows you how Bitcoin is only really just getting started this bull run. If you chart the total Bitcoin capitalization against a US dollar M1 money supply, we can see that even with Bitcoin's huge 
huge run up to over $60,000, charting it against the USD M1 money supply, we aren't even at all time highs. I guess that's what happens when you exponentially print money. An interesting way to look at BTC. Next up, we have the Bitcoin adoption curve. This is a classic chart, but for those that haven't seen it before, you can see how exponential the adoption of Bitcoin is and how similarly it rivals the adoption of the internet. Sometimes you just have to take a step back and look at the trend. Imagine what we will be in a decade from now. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you in the next video and as always, have a great day.